Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Bex, I'm one of Finley, who's one, and I make videos about parenting, lifestyle, and motherhood after infertility. I do all sorts of videos that are sort of mum related, home related, and as I struggled with infertility for a couple of years, I tried to make videos to give back to the community that helped me so much. So if they're the sorts of videos that appeal to you, then don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell below so you know when my videos go up. So with that said, uh, today I wanted to do my second video in the Mother Bookers series, which is a series that I've started um, that reviews different types of books. The previous one was The Danish Way of Parenting, which I'll leave a link to below. And they won't all be parenting related, but today's book is Raising Boys by Steve Biddulph. Um, Steve Biddulph has also done a follow-up book, which is Raising Girls. I haven't read that one, um, but I'll leave a link to that below in case you want to check it out. So I'll just get straight on into reviewing the book. I think the first thing to note about this book is that it was published in 1997, which is quite a considerable amount of time ago now. And although I did like the book because it has some interesting concepts and slants on the way of raising boys, I don't always agree with um, the author's attitudes towards things, or I don't always agree with the perceptions of things. I think that's probably because it was written in the 1990s. And I think even in that space of time, things have moved on quite a bit. So I'll just go through the blurb on the back. In this new edition of the groundbreaking word of mouth bestseller, Raising Boys, Steve Bidulph discusses the warm, strong parenting and guidance that boys need. How can we teach boys to be happy, confident and kind? What are the three stages of boyhood and how can we make them go smoothly? Testosterone, how it changes behaviour and what to do about it. How boys' brains are different, how mothers teach boys about life and love, and the five essentials that fathers provide on what to do if you're a single mum. How to help boys learn a caring attitude towards sex, and eight major changes schools must make to be good places for boys. I think what led me to this book is when I was pregnant with Finley. It is quite a taboo subject, but I was scared at the idea of having a boy. I think it's just because I'm quite a feminine sort of woman. I just thought, oh god, it's going to be football, I don't know anything about football really. And I just jumped to a load of stereotypes. It wasn't any great surprise for us that we were going to be having a boy, because Dan's family is quite a big boy sort of family. So we just assumed if we were going to have a baby, he would probably be a boy. But I just... Um, once the initial sort of <gasps> had gone, I thought what an opportunity to bring up a boy in today's society really and to guide him and I think it's really important to consider what boys and men's position is in society these days. I think with the empowerment of women, which is obviously a really important movement, we also have to consider how boys and girls and men and women relate to each other in that process. So, that being said, what I like about the book is that it goes through what the three stages of boyhood are. It says the three stages then, the first stage is from birth to six, and this is the age when the boy primarily belongs to his mother. He is her boy, and his father may play a very large role. And the aim at this stage is to give strong love and security, and to switch a boy onto a warm and welcoming environment. And then a second stage, which is from 6 to 14, which is when the boy of his own internal drives starts to look at what it is to be a man, what it is to be a boy, and I'm looking more to male role models and male sort of activity. And then finally, the years from 14 to adulthood, which is when boys need input from male mentors. And it does say, you know, there isn't, an in, it, there isn't a sudden sharp shift from one stage to the other. It's a real sort of fluid, organic process. And what I like about that is that it gives you a, a structure or a framework, if you want, of what to sort of expect with boys. I think I was initially quite, oh, because I knew what it is like to be a girl and I knew what stages to expect with girlhood but I didn't necessarily know how I was going to relate to having a boy which is stupid when I think about it because a lot of my friends are male friends and I've always really gotten well with boys when I was little and then men as an adult 
So I just wanted a book that would help me to bring up a well-rounded, sensitive, but secure boy. And that's why I initially got the book. I suppose the second reason why I'm interested in this book is having had a background in teaching and knowing that there's a disparity between uh, the results of boys and girls in exams and in academic progress. I just wanted to make sure that from the beginning I was trying to do everything I could to ensure that Finley has the right grounding for school life. There's still a big lag between boys and girls in terms of academic performance and although I don't want to put academic pressure on Finley, I don't want to funnel him into any particular avenue, I just want him to thrive and to support that the best way I can. And I like the fact that it discusses what schools maybe need to do differently because it's it's a, been a problem now for the last sort of 30 years that boys are lagging behind girls in terms of academic progress. So what don't I like the book? Um, I think at times the book can be relying on gender stereotypes or make presumptions about boys and girls without any reference to evidence. There is a section in the back of the book with notes from where research has come from, which I think is useful, but it doesn't automatically, when it's making a point, refer back to that evidence. And I quite like my non-fiction books to be evidence-based. Some of the things that were said to do with um, how boys and girls relate to each other are how boys learn differently to, to girls. I just felt it would have made a stronger book if it had been a bit more evidence-based with it. The main things that I took away from this book are the ideas of having a male mentor or role model that's not necessarily the father figure as someone to help raise your boy into becoming a rounded individual. Um, the reason why that sort of struck me as an interesting idea is quite often in the past me and Dan have talked about just things to do with his work and with him being a joiner he's quite often had apprentices work with him. He's generally been picked as someone who takes the apprentices under his wing and sort of builds a confidence and teaches in the sort of the skills and the tools of the trade that they'll need. He's taken it upon himself in the past to bring them out of the shell a bit with banter and all that sort of thing. So it's something, the idea of a male role model or a mentor is something that we've always sort of discussed, not formally, but just something that's cropped up in conversations. And so it struck me with this, the idea of a male mentor, because what used to happen is that you young boys would become apprentice to a trade and they would have an older person in that workplace that would help to bring them on and guide them and give them confidence. And I think that idea is really good if you are a single parent. The other thing that I thought was interesting in the book is the chapter on, it's called A Revolution in Schooling. So it talks about later starting age for boys. This is a concept that's not new and does happen um, in other areas of the world where boys do start school slightly later and the reasoning behind that, the way boys' brains are wired, shows that they develop their language and communication skills a little bit later than girls do. I'll read you just a little bit that sort of explains why that is the case. So the left half of the cortex grows more slowly than the right in all human babies, but in males it is even slower still. The testosterone in a boy's bloodstream slows things down, Oestrogen, the hormone that is predominant in the bloodstream of baby girls, actually stimulates faster growth of brain cells. As the right half grows, it tries to make connections with the left half of the brain. In boys, the left half isn't ready to make the connections yet, and so the nerve cells reaching across from the right cannot find a place to plug in. So they go back to the right side where they came from and plug in there instead. As a result, the right half in a boy's brain is richer in internal connections but poorer in cross connections to the other half. This is one possible explanation of boy's greater success in mathematics, which is largely a right side of the brain activity, and their greater interest in taking machinery to pieces and leaving the bits lying around. So, like I was saying before, 
although it's informative and interesting and sometimes it does make sort of lazy stereotypes but it says but we must be careful not to overdo these conclusions that sometimes parental expectations practice and social pressure also influence skills and abilities it's clear that practice actually helps more brain connections to be laid down permanently so encouragement and teaching actually affect the shape and the power of the brain in later life then it goes on to say dr harasti found that in females two regions of the brain dedicated to handling language are proportionately 20 to 30 percent larger than in males but no one knows whether these regions are larger at birth or because girls get more practice at using them whatever the case we do know that the brain is very responsive to learning experiences if they are given at the right age and for language that age is zero to eight in adolescence and adulthood we go on learning but the older the child the harder it is to change that early wiring of the brain you can help your boy to communicate better starting right from when he is a baby this means he'll be a better reader writer and speaker when he goes to school and then it goes through sort of practical steps so it says talk them up one step at a time explain things to children at every chance you can read to your kids from an early age so i like that side of things from it and i think that's important to take away from it the famous phrase it takes a village to raise a child is discussed in the book as well with the idea of a community challenge so it talks about losing winning and grace men at work initiation into teenage years there's a whole chapter on what dads can do i think these days there's more and more of a movement towards men being recognised as co-parenters rather than just being babysitters are the ones that help out. There'd be more of an emphasis on equal parenting as it should. So that would be invaluable, I think, for your partners to read. So overall, I would recommend this book, but I do think you need to take some of the things with a pinch of salt just because it was written quite a while ago. And like I said, it does have some areas that I think are a little bit reliant on gender stereotyping but it does give really useful information and it's a quick read i read it in a weekend i hope you've enjoyed this book review don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for more mother bookers book reviews and if you're a vlogger and you're considering doing a book review why not get in touch with me and we can do some sort of collaboration on the mother bookers hashtag right well i will see you in the next video bye